Well, hi again, folks. I'm back again. Anyway, I was doing some testing tonight with my little drop riffle sluice, and I thought maybe somebody else would be interested in some of these tests as well. This is a little sluice I built, and it has a clear sight on it, and different features that I've included on this that I can test and see just how well they work out. And uh, so... For those who are interested in building sluices, here's some things that may be of help to you in your building. Well, this little sluice was my first test at trying out the uh, deep well or the sump sluice or whatever. And also, I wanted to test the shape of different riffles on it to see if that would make any kind of a difference. And uh, so... Looking at it from the top, you can't tell a whole lot. So then I decided to put this little plexiglass plate on the side so that I can see things a little better. And that worked much better. Well, with this new design, the uh, water bar is buried down into the bottom of a sump or a well. And then the well fills up and overflows over the top and gives a much, much smoother water flow. As you can see here, I cut a 45 degree angle on this to uh, make the transition a little smoother. However, I was curious as to whether or not uh, just a straight up and down uh, wall would work as well. Well, on this mini sluice, I cut off part of the angle on there so it was a vertical wall to see how much of a difference it would make in the water flow. And it makes a little bit of a difference, but uh, not that bad, and especially for on a sluice. Well, one of the questions that I had was whether or not cutting a little bevel on the end of the slick plate would help to guide the dirt down into the riffle a little better. And also I was wondering about whether or not an undercutting it would help to uh, kind of hide the gold and hang on to it. And the answer in both cases was a yes. On the first riffle, I had it shaped as kind of a triangle but then uh, I wanted to see what a vertical face on it would be like so I cut that on this one this time and also I dropped the top of the slick plate about an eighth of an inch below the uh, top of the first riffle there to see if that would make a difference. So basically what I have is a square riffle on the first one, typical of the way they make uh, drop riffles today on the commercial versions. And so the rest of them have undercuts and I wanted to see if uh, that changed the water pattern. And also uh, I figured that uh, being undercut on both sides would help hide the gold a little better under there to where the water couldn't wash them out. And yes, those undercuts like that definitely hold the gold much, much better. Well, here you can see how the water comes off from the top of the slick plate. Then it has to rise to go over the top of that little higher riffle. Then it drops back down to the uh, level of the rest of the sluice. Well, it's time for a little mud in the hole. Now, if you look at the end of the slick plate, you can see that beveled edge that the sand just travels down that bevel and right into the trap. So it does make a difference. 
and uh, it kind of just slams up against that vertical wall on the opposite side and uh, that creates kind of this little vortex in there. Well this is minus 20 material and this is a little higher water flow than I would normally run this at but I'm trying to uh, make it so this isn't too terribly long. But this is the way a uh, drop ripple sluice should work. You should have these dancing sands in there and what they're doing is they're exchanging the lighter material out. They keep the heavier stuff and then they throw out the uh, lighter. And by dancing like this, the lighter material dances higher than the heavier and gets washed out eventually. So this is the way it should work. Also, this dancing creates a quicksand and so any gold that happens to come along will be dropped right down into the bottom of the ripple. All of the exchanging will keep going on until everything that has a weight that can't be moved by the water is all that will be left down in this riffle. And as you can see, the gold is some of the heavier material, and it will remain here in the riffle, and all the rest of the lighter material will eventually be ejected out. So everything of a certain size uh, will is all that's going to be left. Now pay attention to these two riffles and how they uh, are different in how they handle the sands. The flat faced riffle just kind of uh, makes a little vortex in there and spins the material and uh, throws the lighter material out that way. And the one on the right throws the material back up the back wall and into the uh, water flow again. So by changing the shape of the riffle makes quite a difference in how it handles the processing of the sands in there. So far we've been running the uh, sluice the way you should and that is classify your material down to different sizes and then adjust the water flow for that particular size that you're running and run each size separately. Well I know there's a lot of people out there that want to uh, run it without classifying. So let's see what happens when you start running the bigger material through without the classification. Now this is only minus four material but uh, you can see how immediately it shuts down the operation of the uh, sands. Well now, your sluice action, or your riffle action, is shut right down to nothing. And so you need to increase your water flow considerably in order to move that larger rock out of there. Now as soon as you move that larger rock, you're going to wipe out all your fine gold and finer materials that you've been collecting. Now if you try to add more finer materials to the mess, then you get not much of anything. It just uh, hits that dead solid rock material and uh, goes right over the top and the finer material and gold goes right on out the end of the sluice. Yeah, there will be a little uh, of it that gets caught in the cracks, but it won't take long for the cracks in between those larger rocks to get filled up. And so now, 
all you're doing is uh, sending all the uh, finer gold right on out the end of the sluice. So if you want to process uh, the larger material, then you should run it separately from the finer. As you look down on top of the sluice, then you can see that uh, the riffles have virtually stopped working. And now everything that we uh, pour into it is just going right over the top and on out the back door. So any chances of you catching fine gold now are reduced considerably because there's no more room in between those big heavy rocks and there's no exchange going on to make more room for them. So this is why uh, it's not a good idea to run unclassified material. I think that the drop riffle sluice for catching fine gold is one of the best sluices out there. But you have to run it properly in order for it to work uh, to catch the fine gold too. So anyway, I hope this has been of some help to some of you. And uh, as always, I thank you for stopping by and watching. And I hope you have a good day. Bye now.